Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this example. Okay. So we have this complex integration and we have to find its value. We have to solve this integration over this curve C. C is a circle mod Z is equal to one. They have mentioned we have to solve with the help of Cauchy's residue theorem. Okay. So let us consider that integral as I first. we have i is equal to integration over c e raised to z upon cos pi z dz. So here the most important thing is that curve c. So let us draw that curve first, then we will discuss the function. Where c is the circle what z is equal to 1. So to draw this circle, we need to have center and radius of that circle. So for that, I'm going to compare the given equation with this standard equation of circle. Okay, so this is standard equation of circle here. Z naught is center R is radius. Okay. So here only we have mod Z that means Z naught is not there. It means Z naught is zero. So the center is zero. So let me mention center zero, zero means basically zero plus I zero, get it? Real part zero, imaginary part zero. So that's why we write zero comma zero. Okay. Having a same meaning. Let us write radius. If you compare right hand side, R is equal to one we get. So the radius is one. That means given circle is a circle with center zero, zero radius one. So let us draw the circle. Real axis, imaginary axis, right? One, two, minus one, minus two, one, two, three, four minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So we have radius 1 center 0, 0. So that means we get a circle like this. This is a given curve, getting? So after that, we will consider the given function. So let us write the function now. Okay, so let me remove this part. So what is the function we have? f of z is e raised to z upon cos pi z. Okay. This is a given function. So let us recall that we have to solve this integration with the help of Cauchy's residue theorem. So let us recall the statement of Cauchy's residue theorem and then we will plan how to solve this problem. So Cauchy's residue theorem says integration over c f of z dz. Do you know Cauchy's residue theorem? It, uh, it is stated as 2 pi i sum of residues. That means with the help of residue, we find a value of integration, right? What we do, we find the singular points of f of z. That means the point where function is not analytic. Then we check those points are lying inside or outside the circle. If any point lies outside, we do not find residue at that point. But if any point lies inside the circle, we find a residue for all, all such singularities. Then we take sum of all such residues and we take product with 2 pi i and we get the value of integration. So here also I will follow the same method. So now we have to find the singular points of function. Singular point that means a point where function is not analytic. Generally we say the point where the denominator is 0. So let us see for what values of z denominator will be 0. Here, if it's not analytic, if that denominator, that means cos pi z is 0. So we know that cos pi by 2 is 0, cos minus pi by 2 is 0, cos 3 pi by 2 is 0, cos minus 3 pi by 2 is 0 and so on. So that means that is our pi z must be either plus minus pi by 2 
और प्लस माइनस थ्री पाई बाई टू और प्लस माइनस फाइव पाई बाई टू एंड सो ऑन देन ओनली कॉस विल बी जीरो सो पाई जेड मस्ट बी वन ऑफ देम गेट इट देन ओनली कॉस जेड कॉस पाई जेड विल बी जीरो नाउ लेट अस सिंप्लीफाई इट लेट अस कैंसल पाई फ्रॉम ऑल साइड्स सो इफ यू कैंसल पाई फ्रॉम बोथ साइड सो यू विल गेट जेड इज इक्वल टू प्लस माइनस वन बाई टू प्लस माइनस थ्री बाई टू प्लस माइनस फाइव बाई टू सो ऑल दीज आर सिंगुलर पॉइंट्स ओके सो लेट मी मेन्शन सो दीज आर सिंगुलर पॉइंट्स पॉइंट्स ऑफ एफ ऑफ जेड सो नाउ इट्स अवर टास्क टू फाइंड विच पॉइंट्स आर लाइंग इन साइड द सर्कल एंड विच आर लाइंग आउट साइड द सर्कल पाई बाई टू सो पाई बाई टू विल बी हियर फर्स्ट पॉइंट नेक्स्ट इज माइनस पाई बाई टू सो इट इज हियर नेक्स्ट थ्री बाई टू प्लस थ्री बाई टू इट इज हियर थ्री बाई टू माइनस थ्री पाई माइनस थ्री बाई टू हियर वी हैव फाइव पाई बाई टू हियर वी हैव माइनस फाइव पाई बाई टू here this is 7 by 2 and here we have minus 7 by 2 so you can easily see only 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2 are lying inside the circle and re all remaining points are lying outside the circle let me clearly mention here z is equal to plus minus 1 by 2 lie inside c and all remaining singularities or singular points lie outside c it means we have to find residue only at these two points okay since these two points lying inside and remaining points are lying outside so no need to find singular residues for all remaining points okay so now our next task is to find residue only at these two points so make a screenshot of it first then i will go further so let us see how to find residue okay so actually the definition of residue involves the lorentz series expansion it is lengthy task okay so with the help of lorentz series if we follow the definition and find a residue it will be very lengthy task if the given singular points are poles we have a very simple formula to calculate residue and fortunately you, you know, we can say that 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2 these are simple poles simple poles means pole of order one so definitely we can use simple formula okay which we have to calculate residues so here z is equal to 1 by 2 and z is equal to minus 1 by 2 are simple poles so that's why I, we can follow the formula to calculate residue so let us find residue of f of z at z is equal to 1 by 2 okay so let us find residue at z is equal to 1 by 2 that formula says limit z tends to 1 by 2 z minus 1 by 2 f of z so i followed the formula and i got this one so limit z tends to 1 by 2 z minus 1 by 2 i am going to put the value of f of z which is e raised to z upon cos pi z getting so uh, we cannot cancel anything here but if i put z is equal to 1 by 2 directly 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 will get cancel and cos pi by 2 is zero that means if you put 1 by 2 we are getting zero at numerator 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 zero by putting z is equal to 1 by 2 and cos 1 by 2 if i put cos pi by 2 it is again zero so that means we get a zero upon zero form so when we get zero upon zero that means indeterminate form we apply ail hospitals rule it says we take the derivative of numerator at numerator and derivative of denominator at denominator so let us do so this is equal to limit z tends to 1 by 2 So derivative of numerator, which is z minus one by two into e raised to z at numerator, and derivative of denominator at denominator. So cos pi z. So this is by by L hospitals 
rule okay there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it first then i will go further so let us find derivative now okay so this is equal to limit z tends to 1 by 2 so we have to take derivative but see uh, we have two functions and product of two functions so i should use this formula derivative of u into v it is u into derivative of v plus v into derivative of u this is a product rule we have to follow to find its derivative this is my u and this is my v so z minus 1 by 2 as it is derivative of e raised to z plus e raised to z as it is derivative of z minus 1 by 2 derivative of denominator derivative of cos is minus sine pi z but by chain rule again we should take derivative of pi z okay so this is equal to limit z tends to 1 by 2 z minus 1 by 2 derivative of e raised to z e raised to z e raised to z as it is derivative of z 1 derivative of 1 by 2 is 0 since it is constant minus sin pi z into pi is constant will come outside and derivative of z is 1 so that's why you get we get simply pi so now it's time to apply the limit that means at a place of z i am going to put 1 by 2 everywhere so we get 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 e raised to 1 by 2 plus e raised to 1 by 2 into 1 you will get same minus sign here also 1 by 2 sign pi by 2 into pi 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 0 and 0 into anything 0 plus e raised to 1 by 2 sin pi by 2 is 1 so minus 1 into pi so it is minus e raised to 1 by 2 by pi so this is required residue get it so similarly z is equal to minus 1 by 2 is also a pole okay simple pole so we have to find residue at that point also just make a screenshot of it then i will go further so let us find residue at z is equal to minus 1 by 2 okay residue of f of z at z is equal to minus 1 by 2 so it is also a simple pole so that's why i will follow the same formula to calculate residue formula says limit z tends to minus pi by 2 z minus minus pi by 2 so minus minus plus pi by 2 f of z okay so we have to put the value of f of z limit z tends to minus pi by 2 z plus pi by 2 our f of z is e raised to z upon cos pi z so we cannot cancel anything here so we if if you are if i apply the limit directly minus pi by 2 plus pi by 2 will get cancelled and we get 0 at numerator similarly if i put z is equal to uh, minus 1 by 2 sorry huh, here i should write minus 1 by 2 so last time we had 1 by 2 so here we have minus 1 by 2 here also minus 1 by 2 so obviously i should write here plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 that's it since our uh, singular point is minus 1 by 2 right so limit z tends to minus 1 by 2 right just a minute let me write it properly minus 1 by 2 okay if i apply the limit directly minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 will get cancelled 0 at numerator and if i put minus 1 by 2 here cos minus 1 by 2 is again 0 that means we get a 0 upon 0 form indeterminate form so obviously i should go for l hospitals rule okay it says by L hospitals rule, we should take derivative of numerator at numerator and derivative of denominator at denominator cos pi z. I should mention by L hospitals rule. Okay. okay. See, at numerator we have a product of two functions, so I should go for u into v formula. U into v first into derivative of second plus second into derivative of first so let us write here limit z tends to minus 1 by 2 so z plus 1 by 2 
डेरेवेटिव ऑफ ई रेस टू झेड प्लस ई रेस टू झेड डेरेवेटिव ऑफ झेड प्लस वन बाय टू यू इन टू व्ही फॉर्म्युला राईट प्रोडक्ट रूल डेरेवेटिव ऑफ कॉस इज मायनस साईन पाय झेड बक बट अगेन डेरेवेटिव ऑफ पाय झेड वी कॉल इट ॲज अ चेंज रूल वॉट एव्हर इन साईड कॉस वी शूड टेक इट्स डेरेवेटिव्ह अगेन आय हॅव टेकन हिअर ओके सो लेट अस कंटिन्यू द नेक्स्ट पार्ट हिअर लिमिट झेड टेन्स टू मायनस वन बाय टू झेड प्लस वन बाय टू वी हॅव डेरेवेटिव ऑफ ई रेस टू झेड इज ई रेस टू झेड ई रेस टू झेड ॲज इट इज डेरेवेटिव ऑफ झेड इज वन अँड डेरेवेटिव ऑफ वन बाय टू इज झिरो सिन्स इट इज कॉन्स्टंट अपॉन मायनस साईन पाय झेड पाय इज कॉन्स्टंट विल कम आउटसाईड अँड डेरेवेटिव ऑफ झेड इज वन सो दॅट मीन्स वी गेट सिम्पली पाय हिअर राईट सो लेट अस अप्लाय द लिमिट अप्लाय द लिमिट दॅट मीन्स ॲट अ प्लेस ऑफ झेड वी हॅव टू पुट मायनस वन बाय टू सो लेट अस सी वॉट विल हॅपन मायनस वन बाय टू प्लस वन बाय टू ई रेस टू मायनस वन बाय टू प्लस ई रेस टू मायनस वन बाय टू इन टू वन यू विल गेट सेम मायनस साईन If I put minus 1 by 2, we get minus pi by 2 into pi. So minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 cancel, we get a 0 and 0 into anything, 0 plus e raised to minus 1 by 2. Minus sign will come outside, minus minus plus, so that means sine pi by 2 into pi. Sine pi by 2 is 1, so 1 into pi, we get pi. So e raised to minus 1 by 2 by pi, okay? So uh, we had a two singular points which were lying inside C. We found out residue at both poles. So the most of task is over here. So the last task is to apply Cauchy's residue theorem. So by Cauchy's residue theorem. Okay. So integration over C e raised to z upon cos pi z dz. Theorem says 2 pi i sum of residues. So this is equal to 2 pi i sum of residues, whatever the residue we have. See the previous residue. Okay, let me check what we had got a residue. Just a minute. Let me check and write here. So it was minus e raised to 1 by 2 by pi. And this residue is e raised to minus 1 by 2 by pi. That was minus e raised to 1 by 2 by pi. And this is this one. Okay. So we want some more space to write. Just make a screenshot of it. Then I will go further. So let us continue. So i is equal to 2 pi i minus e raised to 1 by 2 minus e raised to, sorry, plus e raised to minus 1 by 2. Having a same denominator pi right having a same denominator pi so what will happen this pi pi will get cancelled and we get 2i i am writing it first e raised to minus 1 by 2 uh, see what will i do i will take minus sign common here minus so it will be plus e raised to 1 by 2 minus e raised to minus 1 by 2 so actually this is a final answer but see i am going to write in a proper way let us multiply denominator by 2. So it will be minus 4i e raised to 1 by 2 minus e raised to minus 1 by 2 upon 2. So I multiply numerator and denominator by 2. So it will be 4 and here we get a, got a 2. So why I am writing in this way? Because we are familiar with this formula. Hyperbolic sine x is e raised to x minus e raised to minus x upon 2. Right? Actually the same format we have got. Just at a place of x, we have 1 by 2. So we can write this is minus 4i hyperbolic sine 1 by 2. Okay. So this is a formula we use. So this is a required answer. Just make a screenshot of it. Then we will stop. Okay. And we will meet in next video. Thank you. See you.